Uh, Tom, you are a big believer. I mean, look at that clip there. You're living the dream on many counts. Um, why do you feel so strongly about not just where cryptocurrency is at now, but the future of it? Tim, it's a industry that can benefit so many people around the world. So if we look at a country like El Salvador, 70% uh, of El Salvadorans don't have bank accounts. And so now anybody with a smartphone can essentially have a wallet with a login. They can hold money securely. They can send it from A to B. And also they don't have to worry about things like their uh, country's inflation rate going through the roof and their savings getting washed away. Mm. Mm. Uh, Liam, do you share that hope around cryptocurrency? I mean, I suppose the whole idea behind it is that you, you take it away from government control, you take it away from bank controls. Um, is that a good thing for you? I don't know whether it's going to realise its potential. I think the blockchain component does, but whether cryptocurrencies will um, see the see the the tops on it, I, I'm not sure. I guess I guess it's the word currency that um, probably annoys a lot of us mm. in the financial markets. Currency's got to be have a store of value. It's got to be a store of value. Uh, it's got to be a medium of, of exchange, and it's got to have some period of stability to warrant people um, investing it and um, giving them confidence. And I don't think any of the crypto coins have really done that, and they are. So volatile. Gemma, if I've got the bug, I want to buy some crypto. How do I do it? What's the first thing I need to do? Well, you need to decide which crypto you want to buy, and yeah. I think you should do some research. How do I do that? that? <laughs> well, um, there's lots of information online, um, podcasts you can listen to. Um, Laura Shin um, has a really great podcast called Unchained that is very credible. Yeah. Um, and then you would need to um, find a cryptocurrency exchange in Australia. BTC Markets is quite a credible and reputable one. Mm -hmm. um, and you could buy, you know, as little as $5 or $10 worth to, um, you know, figure out how to set up your own wallet and mm -hmm. actually go through that process. Yeah. Tom, uh, we saw at the start there, you got an, an insight at least into how much of your time you dedicate to what is a maze, the cryptocurrency world. Uh, for someone who just wants to dabble, is that risky? Do you, do you accept that there is a, a risk and you might expose yourself to the volatility that Liam's pointed at yeah. already? Yeah, absolutely. There's, it's probably the most volatile asset in the world. I think over time, as the market cap grows, the volatility will lessen um, and people need to be really careful. Did you get lucky? I did a lot of research before I went into the market. Yep. So... Um, and no, I don't think I got lucky. There is a, a, a growing acceptance of cryptocurrency around the world. Let's bring in now our network finance editor, uh, Gemma Acton, for her thoughts on crypto. Gemma, thank you for your time. I think one of the appeals of cryptocurrency is that they operate without control from governments and central banks. But are we seeing that now starting to change? Yes, Tim, that's the whole philosophy underpinning cryptocurrency, that it's a financial system that operates independently of the existing financial system of dollars and cents and euros and pounds that's controlled by these central governments and authorities. And of course, now that crypto has grown to a multi-trillion dollar industry, it's an increasing threat. And you are seeing some authorities react to that. First and foremost, China. Now, China is, is a really important player in the whole cryptocurrency game. It has very recently moved to ban crypto mining, crypto trading. A couple of years ago, it banned crypto exchanges. It's now made it really difficult for banks to allow transactions to happen in cryptocurrencies. Now, at the other end of the scale, you have El Salvador. Uh, this became, a couple of weeks ago, the first country in the world to decide that Bitcoin is actually legal tender, which means if you're in El Salvador and you're trying to sell something, if the buyer wants to pay in Bitcoin, you have to accept it. We often follow Wall Street's lead in traditional markets. Uh, where's the US at on cryptocurrency? They are looking at starting their own cryptocurrency. Now, this is not a short-term project. It would take several years to get this off the ground, but it's been underway for some time. And you can see the appeal. It would give them much more oversight on transactions that are happening. It would help them uh, make payments more efficient as well. And the US is far from the only country looking at doing their own digital currency. Look at Australia, for example. The Reserve Bank last November launched a big project to look at the advantages and disadvantages and the feasibility of having a digital currency here as well. Gemma, appreciate your insights. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Tim. Uh, Liam, I understand you've tried uh, just in, in recent days trying to buy some, some crypto. Uh, didn't have a lot of success. What happened? Well, look, I was pleased. I went onto a website, an exchange. I'd done some research and it asked me to upload my driver's licence and, you know, know your client, anti-money laundering procedures. But then when I went to buy it and pay and use my visa card, it rejected it. 
mm. and uh, the, you know that the world, you know, the visas are, uh, card around the world is now being pulled, and the banks won't press process a visa card payment into a crypto. And it's this this battle, global battle between the central government, central banks of the world, and the crypto players in terms of managing regulation, managing their economies, and having these players that operate outside. Yeah. And the key will be which crypto can manage and adapt to you know provide that transparency that the governments want. Uh, what do you do when your clients come to you and say, Liam, I'm interested in throwing some of my money into Bitcoin or other cryptos? What, what, what's so high what's risk, your advice? High risk, high return. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the markets, the volatility is insane. Probably one of the most volatile markets there are. It was 9000 bucks a uh, Bitcoin 12 months ago. It was $63,000 in April. It's back down to $32,000 now. I mean, it's 100% volatility. So, you know, you, you've got to risk, you, you risk losing all your capital. Yeah. Another practical question. If I've got a an amount of Bitcoin, how, and, and I want to, you know, buy a car with Australian dollars, how easy is it to convert my Bitcoin into Aussie dollars? Very. Very? Um, yes. I mean, you can um, off-ramp it, as they say, from a cryptocurrency exchange into Australian dollars into your bank account within a 24-hour period. Jim, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, you're now part of a, a company called Power Ledger that uses blockchain technology. Firstly, this is where I'm putting you on the spot, really succinctly. What is the blockchain? It's a record-keeping system that okay. can be used to track anything from, you know, olive oil from Italy being imported into Australia or wine from Australia being exported to China so that you can authenticate it, but it can also create a digital version of something. I'll give you a pass on that. <laughs> How have you turned that into a business then? Uh, well, Power Ledger uses the blockchain to create uh, trading of electricity. So, for example, we're working with Carlton United Brewery they're buying surplus solar from households mm -hmm. and they're being paid in cartons of beer delivered to their house and all of that is recorded on the blockchain. So we're taking solar electricity and turning it into a currency, one that like everyday people could use to buy um, and sell other services as well. So supermarkets mm -hmm. or telcos could buy solar from customers and pay them in phone minutes. So it's really using the blockchain mm -hmm. as a, a way to um, transact between consumers and their favourite brands. Okay. Last question, as the, you know, the big governments and banks start to exert their own clamps uh, in their own countries, you know, China, the US and, and Australia, is that going to knock the stuffing out of the value of the cryptos around at the moment? Is, when China comes on board, is Bitcoin going to crash? So uh, China has banned Bitcoin a bunch of times in the past. Yeah. And right now they've banned leverage trading, which is probably a good thing, and also they've banned mining which for the Bitcoin network, most of the mining that was done in China was probably sourced from coal. So we wanted China to stop mining Bitcoin. So it was a net positive. Only okay. 21 million Bitcoin could ever be created and 18 and a half million have already been minted. So there's only a few yeah, million right. yet to be made. But I think that it's not going anywhere. And so many funds now are wanting to hold Bitcoin in their portfolio. Many financial products are being mm. created out of it. So yep. I think it is an alternative to holding gold. It's here to stay. Mm. All right. Let's get to our flashpoints now. The single most important thing that our panellists would like you to take away from tonight's conversation. Gemma, I'll start with you. Well, I think people are understandably apprehensive about any new technology, but blockchain is the building blocks for a whole new internet, a whole new era of possibilities. One where, you know, you can take the sun's rays and turn that into a currency and I think that's pretty amazing that you mm. know the sun that's been around for a billion years could be something that could be harnessed through a technology like that. Okay thank you. Your flashpoint tonight Tom? Tim uh, some of the rules that I follow when buying and selling is never take anyone's word for gospel. I don't care how many times I've been right and how confident they are people get it wrong and, and if you take someone's word for gospel you're more than likely to uh, break rule number two which is never go all in never go all out because if you get it wrong you're screwed. Number three is when you sell it's forever profit unless you can get back in lower. Mm -hmm. When the chart's like that, you don't, want to, you don't want to buy and sell too much. And number four is news heightens emotions and emotions are a money killer. So don't trade the news. The environmental issues, the um, scaling issues, the China banning Bitcoin, that's all recycled the Elon FUD. The Musk issues. The Elon, yeah, yeah, but that's, it's, it's all recycled FUD. Mm -hmm. So uh, make a game plan. What's FUD? A fear, uncertainty and doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so make a game plan. <laughs> that's my next question. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Your flashpoint tonight, Thanks, Liam. Tim. All investments require an, an assessment of risk and return and uh, you know, forming a view. And in relation to cryptos, you need to do your homework and don't put your life savings on it. Okay. Sound advice. 